But today I'd like to talk about sensor sizes, because that's what I've been thinking about lately, mostly because Canon obviously just released two new APS-C size sensor mirrorless cameras, the R7 and the Canon R10. And Sony just released, or announced, three new lenses for their crop sensor cameras. They're ultralight, they're compact, I believe there's a 10 to 20 millimeter, an 11 millimeter, and a 15 millimeter, so they're all pretty wide. But I thought everything was going full frame, so the crop sensor is back, and apparently doing quite well. And it actually got me thinking about crop sensors in general, and, you know, for the last few years, I've always wanted full-frame sensors. The new C500 has a full-frame sensor. You know, the FX6, the FX9, I believe the FX9, and uh, the FX3 all have full-frame sensors. And I've been like, I want a full-frame sensor because that's obviously better, right? I'm not sure it is. You know, and also, Fujifilm came out with the XHS2, I think which is a crop sensor as well, and pretty much all of their mirrorless cameras, I think. I think all of them, if not most of them, are crop sensors as well. But this has got me kind of thinking about whether full-frame sensors are really better than crop sensors. And I think there's an argument to be made for either, but for a lot of people, I think a crop sensor is actually the better way to go. And most of the shooting that I do is on a crop size sensor. It's on Super 35 millimeter sensor, because the C300 is Super 35, and that is a very similar size to the APS-C sensor. And let's talk about, just kind of want to talk about sensor sizes in general, and where we got sensor sizes, like what they grew out of, because a lot of them grew out of, you know, obviously, film. Whether it's motion picture film or still film. And just to note, all of this is from a video perspective. I'm a videographer, so a photographer might have a completely different opinion on crop sensors versus full-frame sensor cameras. So I'm going to talk about four common sensor sizes, Micro Four Thirds, Super 35, APS-C, and full-frame. And the, uh, the Micro Four Thirds is the smallest of these four, then moving up to the Super 35 and the APS-C. I've heard multiple times that Super 35 and APS-C are the same, but a crop sensor and a super 35 millimeter sensor, they're actually, they're different, a different shape. They might be similar in surface area, but if I put a little drawing of the actual difference, so the crop sensor is actually taller and a super 35 sensor is wider. The Micro Four Thirds is in, you know, Panasonic loves Micro Four Thirds. The GH6, the GH5, that entire series uses Micro Four Thirds. Super 35, that is like the C70, my C300 is a Super 35, the C100, basically all of Canon's cinema cameras, or most, are Super 35 millimeter sensors. I know the newest C500, the C500 Mark II is full frame, but in general, you know, C100, I believe the C200, C300. The FS7 as well is Super 35. And then APS-C, uh, the R7, the Fuji, the new Fuji XHS2, all of the Sony Alpha 61, 3, 4, 5, 6600s, those are all APS-C crop sensors. Now there is a difference between Sony's crop sensor and Canon's crop sensor. Canon's is a little smaller, it's a 1.6 times crop, and Sony's is 1.5 times crop, but they're pretty close. Um, and they're still all considered APS-C size sensors. And then we have full frame, which is obviously significantly larger than any of these. The FX3, the 5D Mark IV, and really all of the 5Ds, the Panasonic S1H, and a whole host of other cameras are full frame. And where do we get sensor sizes? At least the Super 35 in full frame. Those directly correlate to film stock. So a Super 35 millimeter sensor, like in the C300, is roughly the same size as Super 35 millimeter film that most modern motion pictures were shot on from you know, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, into the 2000s. And that's why Canon, Sony, and others in their cinema cameras in the last few years have been putting Super 35 millimeter sensors into their cameras because what are we trying to do? We're trying to mimic film trying to get, make it look cinematic. And one way to do that is sensor size. So they're putting the same size sensor that, you know, would be filming the next major motion picture if it was shot on film, which most aren't anymore, obviously. But um, 
For the longest time, I thought that a full-frame sensor was mimicking the size of motion picture film. And it's not, obviously. Super 35 millimeter sensor is, which is significantly smaller. Um, the reason that we have full-frame sensors in DSLRs and mirrorless cameras is they're built off of still cameras. And they're hybrid, even an FX3 is still, it's, it's a hybrid still camera video camera. And what did DSLR or mirrorless cameras grow out of? They grew out of old school 35 millimeter still cameras. The bodies look very similar. This is actually a, a Rebel 35 millimeter still camera from about 20 years ago. It looks a lot like modern Canon DSLR or even mirrorless cameras today. It was around 2008, 2007, maybe 2009 that the Canon 7D and the Canon 5D came out, or at least the 5D Mark II that could do 24 frames a second, 1080 full HD video. You had an affordable camera body that had interchangeable lenses where you could put really high quality glass on it and get a beautiful image. It was really, it was, it was a huge leap forward for the lower budget filmmaker. And you know, that's where we get full frame image sensors. They are built to mimic 35 millimeter still film. So which is better, APS-C or full frame? I really think it depends on your situation, but I'm going to make a case for why I think a crop sensor has been underrated maybe in the last few years by a lot of people. You know, one of the reasons I was heading in the full frame sensor direction for the longest time was for depth of field, focal length, and low light performance. And some of those are still relevant. I think some of those aren't. Uh, depth of field, definitely. Depth of field is a you know, to get that nice shallow focus, it's a function of focal length, it's a function of how fast your lens is. It's also a function of sensor size. The larger sensor you have, the easier it is to get a nice thin focus and get that nice out of focus background. So it's definitely a consideration, but if you have a really fast lens, you can get nice shallow focus with a crop sensor. For my C300 on the super 35 millimeter sensor, I've got a Sigma 40 millimeter 1.4. And I can get some nice shallow shots, especially for interviews um, where the background is nice and out of focus, you know, even with the smaller size sensor. And I don't usually even have to open up to a 1.4. I'm usually at a, a 2 or a 1.8. It's very achievable if you've got a good lens to do that on a crop sensor. Um, low light. You know, low light is definitely a consideration. I don't think it's as much of a consideration now because there have been a lot of advancements in sensor technology. But... Traditionally, the larger sensor obviously has a larger surface area. It has the ability to collect more light because there's more surface area for the light to hit. With a crop sensor, it's smaller. There's not as much surface area. So traditionally, crop sensors have not done as well in low light as full frame sensors. And, that, you know, like for the A7S, the A7S2, the FX3, you'll notice they have very, like they're like 10 or 12 megapixels. They don't have super high megapixel counts, so they're not really geared toward a photographer. Um, they take great photos, but if you want to blow up a big photo, you're not using an A7S because it just doesn't have a lot of megapixels. And that's one of the reasons it excels in low light, because the pixels, there aren't as many pixels, so the pixels are larger. And that allows the pixels to collect more light, and obviously it does better in low light. And you might not have the noise issues that you would have on a higher megapixel sensor. When I had the Canon R6, it was a 20 megapixel sensor, and it did honestly just about as well as the A7S in low light. If not just as well, I did a low light test. They were, they were really neck and neck. But I think now the advantages that you gain with the larger sensor are not as pronounced as they once were as far as its ability to perform in low light. The C300, honestly, and that's not a new camera. It's a C300 Mark II, does great in low light. Um, now it's a low megapixel camera. I don't know. I mean, if I had the ability to take stills with it, I don't know what the, the equivalent megapixel of that super 35 millimeter sensor are, but it, it does great in low light. And I know like the GH5S or the, the second version of the GH5 did really well in low light and it's micro four thirds. So I'm not saying a larger full frame sensor doesn't naturally do better in low light. I just think it's it's not as... It's not as relevant or not as important as it was maybe five years ago.
Focal length, if you have a larger sensor, you're gonna get a wider shot with an equivalent focal length. A 50 millimeter on a crop sensor is roughly equivalent to a 70 millimeter on a full frame sensor. And that's, you know, depending on the crop sensor, obviously Sony's crop sensors are 1.5X crop, Canon's are 1.6, so it depends on the sensor. But you're gonna get longer reach with the same focal length on a crop sensor than you would with a full frame sensor. If you're looking for a super wide shot, then full frame's probably the way to go. Um, it's easier to get a wider shot. You don't have to have quite as wide a lens to get, you know, those super wide shots. Honestly, on a full frame sensor, a 24 millimeter is nice and wide. On a crop sensor, I never feel like it's wide enough. For the C300 on the super 35 millimeter sensor, I pretty much have this 16 to 35 it lives on the camera because I need that 16 millimeters to get those nice wide shots. And like a 24 to 70 is just not wide enough for a lot of the B-roll I want to get with the C300. So that's a consideration, you know, but if you need that reach, that crop sensor is really nice. Because if you've got a 24 to 70 and you're in, you're on a crop sensor, you're going to get more like 100 millimeters. I remember shooting events on this A7S and I'd be on the 24 to 70 and it wouldn't quite be long enough so I'd put the camera in crop mode and it'd give me another 20 or 30 millimeters, which was really nice. So if you need that reach, crop sensor is very helpful. You just gotta make sure that you've got something nice and wide, you know, 14, 16 millimeters to get those nice wide shots. Just to note, a lot of full frame cameras do have a crop mode, like the FX3 has a super 35 millimeter mode, um, but for video, it won't do 4K in crop mode. When you put it into crop mode, you're limited to HD. You know, it's very useful, but if you want to shoot in 4K, you can't shoot in crop mode. So I think at the end of the day, it's totally up to you whether you buy a full frame sensor camera or a crop sensor. If you have a crop sensor, you just need to make sure you've got wider lenses. Um, if you have a full frame sensor, you need to make sure you've got some longer lenses because you're losing some reach. And probably just depending on the camera, you can have similar low light performances. Depth of field is the same way. You just need a faster lens with a crop sensor than you would with a full frame sensor to get that shallow depth of field. I think it all comes down to price and preference. Usually in general, you're gonna save money with a crop sensor. And I think probably at the end of the day, especially with like the specs on the R7 and the R10 and some others, these cameras are gonna be able to produce a beautiful image, they've got incredible specs, and you just need to know what lenses to put in front of the camera so that you can get the results that you want. And you know, you're probably gonna save some money with a crop sensor camera, and I think that's where it tips the balance for me, especially with the newer cameras that are coming out that are crop sensor, that you can save a little money with a crop sensor and get very similar results. I've got the FX3. I'm not going to give it up anytime soon. I absolutely love it. It's a full frame sensor, but I also love the C300. I'm not planning on getting rid of that anytime soon. And that's, you know, it's super 35, so it's very similar to the size of a crop sensor. Can't go wrong with either. Um, but I think that there's a strong case to be made for crop sensors to being at least as good nowadays as most full frame sensor cameras. And with the price, maybe they're a little better. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think. It might, might, I might be opening a Pandora's box of like controversy over crop sensors versus full frame sensors. But you know, really it's not, at the end of the day, it's not the camera you have. It's what you're able to do with it. The skills you have learned to get the most out of the camera that you have access to. And whether you get a crop sensor or whether you get a full frame sensor camera is not going to make your videos that much better or worse. It's going to be you and the skills that you have. So I really don't care which way you go. I love them both. I love so many cameras. I want all the cameras. I want all the cameras. I want, my, I want an FX6 even though on b and I think they're still on back order for months. And I want, I want the new R7 which is a crop sensor. So I want them both, but crop sensors have gotten very cool in the last few weeks with recent announcements from Sony, Fujifilm, and Canon. That's it. Day 61.